Inch by E.P. Carillo. Yeah, bring up the game. This is your boy. Alright, so. Should be pretty self explanatory as to why this is called the Inch, because it's a big, stubby gordo. Which means it's probably an inch, an inch, in, <laughs> inch in diameter. <laughs> but it's also an E.P. Carillo, and I'll be honest with you, the last time I had an E.P. Carillo, I felt rather underdressed smoking it. So, uh, hopefully, this one is um, not going to inspire that. Uh, should I be smoking this? Because this seems a little out of my price range, you know, feeling. Okay. Looks good so far. I was debating if I actually wanted to set up at this tree that I usually set up in because it rained and rained and rained. All day the other day, all night last night. So it's a little on the uh, every step side. Uh huh. Yep. That is an inch. That is 100% an inch. So far, flavor-wise, it's um, light, very light, largely due to the fact that it's so huge that it's kind of hard to get a decent, decent draw off of it. There is a very kind of sweet, perfumey note to it. Clean tobacco, no spice. Very light right off the bat. I'm going to attribute that largely due to the fact that it's a one inch gordo. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this down to the first inch. There was a weird word joke in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to get this down to the first inch and uh, see if anything intensifies, wakes up, or uh, does something different. Also, maybe figure out if I screwed up my light or not. Okay, so believe it or not, we are actually at about an inch. Problem. <coughs> Whoa! So this is a Gordo. It's kind of developing your typical uh, Gordo smokeability problems. Whereby it's so huge that it's kind of hard to get a good light and a consistent burn all the way across. So this is going to take a couple of touch-ups. Hopefully I can kind of salvage this and it'll end up kind of auto-correcting. But we will see. Also I'm going to yank this band because it's kind of huge and this is not exactly a long stick. Flavor-wise though, There's actually a lot going on in this. So much that I can't quite seem to figure out what individual flavor I'm actually getting. It's definitely getting a uh, kind of piquant spiciness. Clean tobacco. Every so often a little subtle sweet. That kind of uh, picante spice kind of ends up hitting you in the nose as well with the retro hail. So far, very interesting. I'm going to have to definitely pay close attention to what I'm doing here because uh, this one's kind of got uh, some interesting stuff going on in it. The big thing though is I need to figure out how to unfubar this burn because as you can see it's not going very well for me. So I'm kind of calling this my light, but at the same time there's also a little bit of this is also just the fact that it's a big huge one inch gordo. So anyway, I'm going to try to fix this. I'm going to try to pinpoint exactly what flavors I'm getting out of this, because there's kind of a lot going on. And uh, hopefully get a little bit more accurate impression of exactly what the, the stick is about. Well, that's looking like a pretty good halfway point. <coughs> Ash is hanging on for dear life, for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, fortunately, uh, I did manage to fix the burn. It is actually correcting itself just finely, just fine. Uh, I had to burn a little bit of the uh, tip there just to make sure it actually caught up. But uh, yeah, so far, I fixed it and it is burning beautifully. Flavor wise, there is definitely a lot going on. The uh, piquant spiciness is still there, 
but it's kind of mellowing a little bit. Um, there is clean tobacco, roofiness, a little bit of spice, and you know, that piquant spice. Occasionally a floral note, and I swear every so often I get a hit of like a coffee cocoa kind of mocha thing going. Uh, that floral hit uh, definitely hits with the retrohale. Overall, this burn turned out to be rather excellent. <laughs> and I'm pretty much positive everybody's going to end up pinpointing something a little different because there's that much going on in this. <laughs> I think it's uh, kind of par for the course to presume that E.P. Carrillo knows what he's doing. He makes a lot of really good high-end, but not so high-end you can't afford it stuff. And yeah, definitely so far this has turned out to be like the perfect accompaniment to a whiskey tasting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep this on here a little bit longer, see exactly how long it goes until the ash just completely falls free. But... Uh, yeah, so far, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see how long this goes, and then I'm going to, I may do an update on when it actually decided to flump, but uh, I'm going to get this down at the end up and give a final update from there. It did it! Not quite down to the nub, but came pretty close. That ash held on like a champ, and it finally just flump. That's a nice big... Pile of ash on the ground looks like I'm taking an ash tree. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get this down to the nub. <laughs> okay, I think we're pretty much down to the nub here. Basically, the flavors are starting to wash out and get to that hot tobacco point. So far, though, minor light issues aside, this one has been actually a very, very good cigar. Point out there's a lot of flavors going on. I think everybody's gonna get something different out of it. But uh, main flavors it starts off with kind of mm, mellow ish notes. I think it's this kind of the kind of spiciness, a little earthy, clean tobacco, a little floral, occasionally cocoa, coffee. Very cocoa retro hell. It passes through it, past the midpoint, retro hell gets uh, a little sweeter and a little breadier. Uh, after mid the mouthfeel, the mouthfeel, mouth taste, the puff, after the halfway point gets um, quite a bit sweeter actually. There's definitely a nice sweet note in this. That uh, the spice never really completely goes away, but it does mellow out quite a bit. <laughs> so, as far as the burn goes, it burns excellently. This is one of the hazards of Gordos, you have to make sure you get your light right, because if you don't, you can end up getting uh, very, very weird lopsided burns. And that's just kind of a Gordo hazard that you need to be aware of. Otherwise, excellent cigar. If you can find them without breaking the bank, by all means, check these out. These are good. E.B. Carrillo makes a lot of good stuff, and it's good stuff you can afford. That said, it's uh, typically more of a luxury boutique brand, but worth it. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and burn my fingers off on this and uh, wrap this up. <laughs> so, it's kind of funny. We had like a whole day's rain, like the day before yesterday. Yesterday was pretty clear and then it like rained all night. And it looks like it's about to dump right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this up and get out of here. So, if you like this review or any of the review, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know if you had a different experience. Beyond that, check out my Twitch stream, Sunday, Friday night, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. That said, that's pretty much all I got. I'll see you next time.